All right, hey VC, I'm Jamie, welcome back, and we're back with another video, and uh, back with some sad news from the world of rock and roll. Now, you may or may not have heard uh, the passing of John Till, a guitarist with Janis Joplin's band. He's featured on Janis Joplin's last album, Pearl. Uh, John Till passed away Sunday, September 4th, at the age of 78, after a lengthy illness, uh, in his hometown of Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and uh, that's my hometown as well. So, really some sad news from the world of rock and roll. What's been a little odd uh, this week is that uh, the news of this really hasn't broken or been talked about nationally or internationally at least when I'm recording this video it was kind of first on social media people talking about it and sharing it uh, now our local uh, newspaper Stratford Beacon Herald has written an article on John Till that I'm going to share with you uh, but yeah certainly missed in the world of rock and roll John Till guitarist with uh, Janis Joplin of course he's featured on this album Pearl and uh, the full tilt boogie band and that's uh, John Till uh, pictured there on Janis Joplin's uh, last studio uh, album. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd share this uh, article, uh, not only about John Till, but it also talks about uh, Richard Manuel and Ken Kalmuski, all those three guys who grew up together in Stratford, Ontario. Of course, all musicians are uh, Richard Manuel with the band and Ken Kalmuski uh, with Ian and Sylvia's Great Speckled Bird. Uh, so it talks about, of course, uh, John Till, but then uh, includes them uh, in on the article as well. So this is by Galen Simmons uh, from the Stratford Beacon Herald, an article published this week, and I will leave a link to it because there's some really nice pictures with this article as well. Okay, there are only a handful of old school Stratford, Ontario rockers who could say they rubbed shoulders with as many legends and had as much influence on shaping the genre as guitarist John Till. Till's bandmates from The Revels, that's spelled R-E-V-O-L-S, that was an early band, uh, Rich and Manuel, who later gained fame with the band, and Ken Kalmuski of Great Speckled Bird, could have made that claim were they still alive today. But Till was one of Stratford's last living connections to an era of history that helped establish rock and roll as the music of a new generation and set the stage for the evolution of the genre as we know it today. On Sunday, as I mentioned, uh, John Till, at the age of 78, died in his sleep at home in Stratford after a long battle with an extended illness. Now, according to Sean Till, this is John's uh, youngest of two sons, said, I had the chance to go over and see him and I knew something was wrong just by the way he was acting. I got him into his bed and everything, got him comfortable and had a little chat with him, which was nice, so we were able to close that off. That was one thing he wanted to make sure he did before he went. In addition to being a talented musician, uh, John Till, who helped found the Rebels in 1957 with Ken Kalmuski and Richard Manuel while students at Stratford Central Secondary School, which I think was Stratford Collegiate Institute at the time, and went on to play with both Janis Joplin's Cosmic Blues Band and her Full Tilt Boogie Band, Sean said his dad was a devoted and supportive father who freely shared his talent and love of music with friends, family, and community. So talking about the Rebels, that was a band uh, with John Till, Richard Manuel, Ken Kalmuski. They played uh, arenas and, um, and halls uh, in the area. And then, of course, uh, Richard Manuel uh, with the band. And, of course, uh, Richard Manuel pictured here. And the band, of course, would play Woodstock in uh, 1969. Uh, with uh, Janis Joplin's Cosmic Blues Band at the time. Uh, John Till would join up with them. John Till also played Woodstock 1969 with Janis Joplin and then was part of the Full Tilt Boogie Band uh, with Janis Joplin recording the album Pearl. And uh, Ken Kalmuski. Now, Ken didn't play uh, Woodstock 1969, but he did play uh, with Ian and Sylvia's Great Speckled Bird, their sort of country rock outfit. And uh, Ken Kalmuski on bass is pictured uh, right there. There's Ken Kalmuski. So now all three uh, sadly have passed on. So back to the article, and this is uh, Sean Till uh, talking about this, about his dad. He was quiet and a little bit reclusive because of what his job was to be out in the public eye. He liked to have his alone time. He really was just a family guy. He wanted to be around his kids and his grandchildren in recent years. It's hard to process his loss. He was really a great guy, really intelligent, and he was everything to me. Him and I talked on a daily basis. I'm very, very fortunate to have that relationship. Like his own parents, uh, John Till made sure that there was music and musical instruments in their home when Sean and his older brother Michael were growing up, but he never pushed them to follow in his footsteps as a musician. 
saying, he was very kind and very caring, and he was like that with everyone. If what you were doing wasn't hurting anyone, he wasn't going to give you guff for it, Sean says. He never had any sort of ego. That was one thing about him, was he would try to stay away from that spotlight. Even in the days of being that big rock star playing with Janice, he would stay away from that stuff. Uh, Sean Till said one of his fondest memories was performing with his dad as part of the band B.W. Pauly and Plum Loco after Sean replaced Kel Muskie as the band's bassist when Kel Muskie fell ill in the early 2000s. So speaking of that band, uh, I don't think they put out any vinyl, but this is B.W. Pauly and Plum Loco. Uh, they were a local area band, but gosh, you know, featuring John Till on guitar and Ken Kelmusky on bass. But as mentioned from the article, uh, Sean Till uh, filled in for Ken Kelmusky when Ken uh, Kelmusky fell ill in the early 2000s. So this is one of the uh, CDs they have put out uh, over the years. And uh, yeah, so for the next 13 years, Sean Till says, I played alongside my dad. We played every weekend. We played constantly. I mean, what can you say about that? What a special thing to be able to do. We had these different aspects to our relationships. We were father and son. We were best of friends and we were also bandmates. Though, and as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this video and again with the article, though it hadn't been announced officially by the family, news of John's death spread quickly over social media Monday with longtime friends, neighbors, and and members of the Stratford community sharing their condolences with his family. Speaking with the newspaper on Tuesday, Bob Kelmusky, this is Ken Kelmusky's brother, said his family and the Tills had remained friends for his entire life. When he was young, the Kelmusky family's basement became the official clubhouse for the Revels, where friends of the band hung out and listened as John uh, Richard and Ken rehearsed. John would call me, oh, about once a month, Bob said. I knew how sick he was, but I didn't realize his passing was as soon as it happened, so I was shocked. John was a tremendous person, very kind, soft-spoken, very thoughtful, and very, very talented. I'll really miss his humor. He was a really well-spoken and smart person. He always told a lot of stories about different things we did together. I'm just really going to miss having him as a good friend. Now, the uh, article wraps up talking about Catherine Manuel. Now, Catherine Manuel is Richard Manuel's sister-in-law through her late husband, Donald Manuel. Uh, she told the newspaper Tuesday how much she valued her friendship with John and Dorcas Till, uh, John's partner Dorcas, over the years. Uh, Catherine said she grew up with John. His parents and her dad were well-known musicians in Stratford in the 40s and 50s, and their families remained close, often vacationing together at their shared cottage in Sable Beach. It's sort of the end of an era with John and Richard and Ken, Catherine said. They all did so very well as Stratford people. John Till was just always welcoming, always willing to help you, always giving our kids little pieces of technology to take home, and always interested in the world and people around him. So there you have uh, thoughts and memories of John Till, and I will leave a link to that uh, newspaper article from the Beacon Herald uh, because there's some great pictures there of John Till and some of the early days. And the the uh, the, uh, the screenshot uh, for this video is uh, from a, a painting or a mural uh, that was taken from a photograph that's on display uh, at Allen's Alley, and it's literally an alley in downtown Stratford that features uh, you know that it features different moments in 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 sort of Stratford music history, not only. Uh, the Revels, uh, but also like Lorena McKennett, who's based in Stratford, people like Dana Manning and other uh, local musicians. It's called Allen's Alley, and that's part of it, is that uh, that photo of Ken Kilmusky, uh, Richard Manuel, and John Till, where they kind of got together later in life for, for reunions and uh, for that, for that uh, photo. And it's a painting of that, uh, sort of a painting drawing that's on display at Allen's Alley. So that's the picture, the screenshot uh, for this video. So remembering John Till, Full Tilt Boogie Band, legend. Thanks so much. We'll chat again.